You're listening to the Leverage Your Incredible Factor podcast with Darnielle Jervie Harmon. If this is your first time joining me for the podcast, here's what I'd like for you to know about me. First and foremost, I am the absolute best at combining spiritual principles with business growth strategy to turn entrepreneurs into multiple six and seven figure CEOs. Second, I don't do hustle and grind. I do spirituality and systems. And you might be wondering, what in the devil is an incredible factor? And if so, I invite you to go all the way back to the very first episode of this podcast. It's aptly titled, Exactly What is the Incredible Factor? There's even a cool worksheet that I want you to do that will help you to find yours. Oh, I will likely say some things that will make you laugh, a few things that could make you cry, and definitely make you question if you are ready to leverage your incredible factor. Remember, I'm a coach, and my job is to tell you what you don't want to hear and show you what you don't want to see, all to help you to become who God created you to be. I'm so excited that you're here. This episode is powered by the fourth quarter comeback. Listen. If you are a high achieving entrepreneur in business, let me just tell you, I don't care what you have already accomplished this year. We are in the most profitable quarter of the year and I have something for you to make sure that you experience a massive comeback. Go right now to darnielle.com forward slash comeback to hear my most recent free training. Listen, not only will it blow your mind, it will line your bank account. Darnielle.com forward slash comeback. Okay. I am so excited. You can probably hear my smile because in today's episode, I chat with the amazing, the incomparable Lamar Tyler. Okay. I I can't even, I'm beside myself with how amazing this interview was. And I know that you are going to be empowered and inspired and uplifted as you listen in on our conversation. Let me share a little bit with you about who Lamar is. So Lamar Tyler is the creator of Traffic Sales and Profit and probably one of the hardest working digital influencers in the game. He lives by the model passion purpose, and profit, and it has never steered him wrong. His life work hustle creed has taken his company, Tyler New Media, and his blog, Black and Married with Kids, from being a small personal blog to an international brand with paying customers around the globe. His life work hustle creed has taken his business from making no figures to grossing over seven figures. Lamar is serious about teaching others how to find financial, time, and family freedom by making money online. And you can ask his clients. Okay, let me just tell you, I love I love Lamar. We had this most amazing conversation and I have already invited him back for a second conversation. That's how good our time together was. Lamar and I had a much needed conversation, which I'm just going to title. You choose for yourself, but the title I'm giving our conversation is you do not have to choose, that it's time to move to a place where lack and just enough do not exist. My favorite part of our interview, in fact, the whole thing was my favorite, but I'm going to highlight a couple of things for you. He said, most people go into business with a hustle mentality. They dip their, to- and the, they dip their toes in the water Their mentality doesn't change. They're hustling hard, but they're not willing to do what it takes to really build a business. He said, most people don't exercise patience in the way that they should as they are building their business. He says, okay, this is the last thing I'm going to tell you. He says until you listen in, you can't be a lazy employee, but then be a star in entrepreneurship. Okay, let me just tell you, this interview is going to shift and change the trajectory of your business. You are going to want to have pen and paper handy so that you don't miss not none, not narrow nugget we share with you. If you are in business and you have been hustling and grinding and it has not been paying off for you, then I want you to pull up a seat, grab your pen and paper and listen in. Let's jump into my interview with Lamar Tyler. Oh, I know you're going to love it. 
Hi, Lamar Tyler. I'm so excited to welcome you to the Leverage Your Incredible Factor podcast. Thank you. I'm so, excited to be here. Oh, I've been looking forward to having this conversation because you are, per, you personified for me is like next level business. Like, oh, yeah. I'm so looking forward to our conversation. <laughs> but before we jump in, let's tell everybody who you are in your own words. Sure. So my name is Lamar Tyler. I am um, creator and founder of Traffic Sales and Profit. We help entrepreneurs do three things, drive more traffic, convert more sales, and grow the amount of profit in their business. Um, over the last 12 years, uh, my wife and I, Ronnie, who's my business partner, um, we have been focused on uplifting, encouraging, and empowering the African-American community. We did that through our, our first and most public-facing brand, Black and Married with Kids, where we were focused on, um, you know, encouraging and supporting marriages. And now we do it through Traffic, Sales, and Profit, where we're looking to close the generational wealth gap through entrepreneurship. So our life is about helping people. It's about empowering people. Uh, but it's at the same time about we can do all the, all the good stuff and make money at the same time and live the life we want at the same time. And, you know, like, like we don't have to have one or the other. We can have both. Yes. Yeah, look, okay, so everybody who's listening, they're familiar with these. You have already, you've been here for like two seconds and you have already earned a that. that is my whole, that's my whole jam and my whole thing, Lamar. Like, I'm so sick of people feeling like they have to choose. I always say you don't have to choose, but you do have to decide, right? You can have whatever it is you crave, but you have to be willing to do all of the work to make it happen. And I think yeah. that's why I'm so enamored with you and your business. I remember when I first heard of you, it was, you guys were black and married with kids and I wasn't married or didn't have kids, but I was intrigued by how you grew your online community so massively, so fast. And then I had an opportunity to hear you guys speak when you were um, finalists for the Icon Award by then Infusionsoft, now Keep by, or whatever it's called today. Um, and, and got to hear you like kind of tell your story and just be a maverick. Like I, I just love, I, this is what I love about you. I love that you know who you are, you know what you do, and you are uber unapologetic about it. And, and you making crazy bank at the same time <laughs> while, you are, while you're doing good in the world. And I, and I, like, I love that uplifting and empowering and just, I'm just, I'm humbled and honored (laughs) and just grateful that I get to spend a little bit of time introducing, you know, my listeners and my podcast to your brilliance because you are brilliant. And what I would like to do is I want to kind of start at the beginning. I want to talk about, you know, how you and Ronnie came to create Black and Married with Kids and then how that then transitioned into what it is that you're you're doing today with TSP and and especially like I want to know the turning point when it started to really get good because because we've talked about the first event and there was like 38 people there right you thought it was 68 but it was really like 38 and now you just had 600 people and I mean I don't know if you want to talk about the money but I think you generated like some millions of dollars with yeah, all the people that that. Join your mastermind. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm look, I'm here for it if you're here for it. So let's start at the beginning. Yeah, sure. So uh, I have a, a background in IT, right? That was my kind of career. And I've always been, um, you know, drawn to entrepreneurship. I've had multiple businesses, not my first business. I had some that did well, some that didn't. But my, my career gig was in information technology. Mm-hmm. And how we kind of, you know, got into Black and Married with Kids, what happened is that, um, I was running an IT department at a TV station in DC. And and one day, uh, Black Enterprise had run an article like they do every year, and it would say, like, kind of like the top markets for African Americans. And it talked about how uh, Prince George's County in the DC area, where I'm from, uh, was kind of like the number one area that year, right? So I took that into the station GM, general manager of the station. And I said, hey, look, you know, look at what this article says. I want to um, pitch you the idea of allowing uh, me, and it was a, a one-off, I had a partner, Micheline, down in the newsroom. Mm-hmm. Um, and Micheline had, had to connect with everybody in the city, all the radio people, the TV people, celebrities that came through, whatever. I said, we want to create and launch a website um, specifically geared towards African-Americans here in the D.C. area. Um, we don't need you to add anything. You know, we can create con- we can use content that's already on the station site, that's already on the um, partner, um, other owned and operated station sites, and we can do something. I just need you to green light it. So he, green, he greenlit that project. We launched it. Um, it was phenomenal, right? Huge success. 
uh, at the time, I think each station had maybe four, and it was 22 owned and operated stations across station group. Each one had about four different websites other than their main news site. There were these niche sites. Mm -hmm. And out of, you know, 22 stations, each having, you know, four sites each, we were like number three in the entire station group. Wow. When I say them like a lot of these other, other websites had like millions of dollars in resources. They had news crews. Um, they were doing this big high school football thing, and they'd have helicopter flyovers over the football field. And we had this low site targeted towards African Americans. Um, that was just getting it. That was killing with traffic. They didn't really understand, you know, um, how to monetize, even though we told them how. They didn't understand why people were reading the articles they were reading, even though we knew. They didn't understand how we were getting traffic from other sources that we had a relationship with. But the thing is, I kept going in, and, you know, I, I, we were successful. And this was before, it was the first news site of its time. It was before the griots, before the roofs, before everything. So I go in, and I'm pitching it, right? And I'm like, hey, we can take this national. And the GM tells me, well, I don't see how that benefits us. Mm. Because all he's thinking about is I'm the GM of DC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if this blows up in Atlanta, it blows up in you know uh, Dallas or Houston or New York, right? It does not benefit him is what it really was. And, and I kept seeing a process where I was going into pitching ideas in, in the morning management meetings around the web because we really wanted to drive into the web as a, as a station. Mm -hmm. But everything I would pitch, they just wouldn't get it. Mm. And, and everything they they saw everything from a very corporate, big business lens. Mm -hmm. Where, okay, we can't do that because we need, you know, uh, uh, five photographers and we need somebody managing them and we need an editor and this and that and that. And I'm saying, no, nah, I know somebody at home is doing all the same stuff and they just doing it from their bedroom. But they really couldn't see the vision of what I was pitching. So at a certain point, after getting turned down so many times, what I did is I came home and told Ronnie, I said, you know what, I'm tired of giving them my million dollar ideas, we're gonna build our own million dollar business. Mm -hmm. And we sat and talked about what's something that we can build um, and we can do it at the time, like blogging was kind of new. This was, uh, 2007. Okay. So blogging was kind of new. It was out there, right? People knew about it, but we didn't really know people making money. Like we heard somebody in California made money, but it was like a rumor, like rumors on the web about people making money. And it really, the revenue lines weren't clear, but we said, we're going to start this thing. We're going to create a blog. And we said, if we want to create it, we're going to act as if it's a business from the very beginning. Okay. So if this thing does take off, we're not going to have to go back and try to retrofit and then try to switch stuff and change stuff. Let's act as if it's a business from the very beginning and treat it like that. And we said, what's something that we're passionate about and that people like to talk about? Because, uh, Daniel, if I can be real, like, I can write, but I'm not one of those people who's like, I just want to write to free my soul. That ain't me. Right. Like, if I'm writing, somebody got to be reading. When Zoom, <laughs> they stop reading, I ain't writing no more. Right, 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 so, right. So uh, we said, what do people like talking about? Relationships is one of the big things. Yeah. And then we went deeper and we said, well, let's look at not just relationship, but marriage and not just marriage, but marriage in the African-American community and how it's viewed inside of our community, how others outside of our communities actually view us. And let's change the perception because at the time, you know, uh, we would see people come into a home or come into a house or in some way with family and friends and say, hey, I'm getting married. And people would say, uh, are you sure you want to do that? Mm -hmm. You know, don't make the same mistake I did. Uh, it just didn't seem happy. So we said there had to be other couples. At the time, me and Ronnie had only been married two years. Mm -hmm. But we said there had to be other couples uh, that love each other like we love each other. We know that there are fathers in the home taking care of their kids and somebody else's kid. But that just is not the narrative and the story we're being told. Right. So we launched Black and Married with Kids in December 2007. Uh, instantly took off, right? We had couples coming to us and said, we've been married 20, 30 years. We never see ourselves represented. We had singles coming that said, hey, my parents were married 40, 50 years. So I know this exists but we never see it in the press and the media. All we see is everything to the contrary. And um, like I said, it just, it just kind of took off. We got readers, we got people to us. Um, we had to learn how to market and sell, right? That's the next right. chapter of the story. Right. But, um, you know, we definitely knew we, we were onto something and we, we filled the void. And we knew the void was there because we were in that actual niche. So, you know, we said that there's no one talking to us, right? We kept seeing the news specials and all the things going on. Right. And we felt like we were being left out. We knew there were other people in that same space. So when we created that site, it began to fill a niche and people flocked to it, basically. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I want to just pull back on a couple of things you said. Yep. For those that of you who are listening, I want to make sure you capture this. So first, we're going to go all the way back to the newsroom and the pitching of the ideas to the GM. And, and what I wrote down, as you were saying, when he said, I don't see how this benefits us, when you were talking about going nationally, is you have to be aware of people who don't think big. Yeah. And so many people have people who don't think big in their ear, and that is why their business ideas never get off the ground. There's a reason why the Jim Rohns and the Zig Ziglers of the world say, 
look at the five people with whom you spend the majority of the, your time and you will be just like them. So you really do need to make sure that you get around people who feed your soul and feed your vision. And even if they don't see it for themselves, they ask you, well, why can't you do it? To get you to keep pushing on and, and moving forward. So that was the first thing. The second thing that I really love that you said is that you decided from day one, if we're going to do this, we're going to act like it's a business. Okay. Like that is a, that earned you your second purple hand cut. <laughs> and it's like, this is what I see. And I'm sure you see it too. Um, and, and today I don't work with people who are just starting their businesses anymore. My clients have been in business for a while. They're making money, but I help them like really volumize it. But most people, and I don't, I don't know, I don't want to make it just a, our people thing, even though I do today work with mostly our people as well, don't understand the tenets of business and business acumen to even think of their business as a business from day one. But if we did, and I always say, if we gave our businesses the same respect we gave our job, right? Before we started looking at the possibility of not sitting behind that desk anymore, we showed up bright eyed and bushy tailed and we always spoke up in meetings and we always shared those million dollar ideas and we were in it. And if you cut us, we would bleed whatever the colors of the awning were for the company. If we did the same level or, or acted with the same level of tenacity for our own thing from day one, we would be so much further ahead. And then the third thing, um, which is huge, right? The universal law of business says you got to be solving a problem, right? So finding a void and filling it in the marketplace and not just filling it, and you didn't say this, but this is what I know because, of course, I've been to the site, is filling it well, filling it in excellence. So what was it about you and Ronnie powwowing and deciding that, you know, from day one, we're going to do this thing, we're going to do this thing right, that allowed you to create it in excellence? Where did that come from? Well, I think you said on something big a minute ago, and something I always talk about. Um, most people go into business with uh, a hustle mentality, mm -hmm. right? They're not seriously like about building a business. They're seriously about building a hustle. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, like this little side thing that I'm a, I'm a hustle on and I'm going to give it like a little bit of my time. I'm going to do stuff when I feel like doing it, right? And just kind of work from that mentality. And even if it begins to make money, they still never get serious about framing it as a business. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of people, right, that I think have a dip their toes in the water mentality as well. Mm -hmm. where they're never really fully ready to jump and dive straight in. And I'm not saying that, hey, you quit your job today and dive straight. That's not even what we did. Right. But, you know, like, like, like even when opportunities arise or when money comes in or when they get the call that they've been waiting on or they get the, the, the knock on the door that they've been praying about, what do they do when that moment comes? Do they say, all right, this is what I've been asking for, praying for, preparing myself for, and do they go full steam or do they still just have their toes dipped in the water? Right. So I think with Ronnie and myself, it really was just about being conscious that, hey, if we're going to spend time doing this thing, we're going to go hard at it. So what did that mean? I always talk about the fact that in the D.C. area, I had an hour and a half commute to and from work, back and forth each day. Uh, when I was walking out the house, our kids were just waking up, and we had four kids all under the age of 12. Mm -hmm. um, so, and Ronnie had her own demanding job. She's a project manager for IBM, running $30 million projects. She was under her own stressful job, just like I was. So from me leaving and the kids just waking up to getting home and it's already dinner time. And Ronnie has worked her, her stressful day, um, did homework with the kids, cooked dinner. When I get home, we go from dinner time to bath time, bath time to bedtime. We can't start building a business till 10, nine, 10 o'clock at night to two, three in the morning. Yeah. Most people aren't willing to do what's really required to build a business, especially if that business isn't given to them. Mm -hmm. and, and it just took that type of resolve of saying, you know what, we want something bigger than what we currently have. And we're willing to put the work into it. And when we put the work into it, like you said, we want to operate a level of excellence. And that level of excellence is at whatever level we were at. So when we started, the level of excellence now looks totally different. Than oh, the yeah, day. definitely. Right. Let's about that, right? Yeah. Hey, in, in my events, a lot of times I show people like what the original Black and Mary Kids website look like. Because a lot of people look at like the now and they trying to compare it to that. Right. But I want people to see this is what it looked like when it started, when I was doing all the design and when I got clip art that was logos of us or or when we didn't even go by our names ronnie was the mom i was the dad because we didn't want our jobs to find out what we were doing right yeah right so well, it's been in that but it's just all really about having a resolve that hey 
if I say I want to build a business, if I say I want to uh, create generational wealth, if I say I want to change my lifestyle, I'm going to have to really go hard, be specific, and be intentional, right? That word intentional about making sure things happen the way they need to happen. Yeah, I think that's good. And I think, you know, if, if we could just get people to be honest enough about what it is that they want, then we could probably lose that hustle mentality. I think I'll use myself as an example. You know, I was born, I was not born into an entrepreneurial family unless you count the drug dealers, right? I mean, they were, they were <laughs> but you know, my dad worked for GM and, you know, he got up and went to work every single day and, you know, uh, all of that. And everyone was like, you know, get a, just get a good job, right? Just, just get a good job. All you want is you want a place where you can bloom for 30 years and get your pension or whatever it was called. I don't even know. I'm so unemployable. I can't even speak the lingo anymore. And, um, and if we took that same energy, like, and just applied it to what it is we really want, because I was working in corporate America and I progressed quick. I mean, I went from 217 entry level to vice president in three years. Yo, like if I was still there, I'm sure I would be a senior executive vice president of something, right? I just know because I had the acumen, it came naturally to me. It was, it was it. But I, I had that day when I said, I'm not supposed to be sitting behind someone else's desk. And this is a person who wasn't an entrepreneur. But what I knew, unlike what you described, which I totally subscribe to, that most people do everything with a hustle mentality, I knew from day one, if I'm going to do, if I'm going to leave my good job, where I was making $120,000 a year with a $25,000 bonus, then this thing needed to be legit, legit, <laughs> right? Like people say to me all the time, because, you know, I do run my little business, my small business, like it's a major corporation in every way. And they're like, like how did you even come up with this? Or when did you have time to think about it? Like, I don't have time to do anything half-assed. Like, right. Who has time for that? Because I could still be at that job collecting probably what would be maybe a quarter of a million dollars a year now just to come in every day and, and goof off for most of the day. I could be doing that, but I've chosen not to do that. So it's got to be way more than what I could be earning if I was just sitting behind someone else's desk. Yeah. And I think if we could get people to understand that, and we haven't even begun to talk about generational wealth, which we are absolutely going to go there in a few minutes. Um, then everything would change. So I just, I applaud you. And, and I, you know, I've met your wife, a beautiful woman, but also about her business, which I got mad respect for you, Ronnie Tyler. So when you hear this, like, I love it because it, it gives me, it gives me life to be around people like that. Right. Um, and can, I add, can I add something real quick to that too? Because I think it's important we talk about, when we talk about this excellent piece, what I've found, um, and, and you reminded me this as you were speaking about your background and your career is that successful people are successful. Mm -hmm. No matter what they do, right, they find success in it. So the, the most successful entrepreneurs I find are people that were highly successful when they work corporate, when they work for somebody else. And I think most people, uh, or I'm gonna say most people, a lot of people, right, we'll mm -hmm. say that. A lot of people have a lazy mentality that, hey, I'm gonna be a lazy employee, but I'm gonna be a successful entrepreneur. Right. It don't really work like that, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm, I'm gonna be lazy in all these other areas of my life, but in this one thing, I'm gonna be a star. So what I would tell somebody that's listening today that wants to make that leap or has dreams or aspirations about getting the entrepreneurship and being highly successful is be highly successful where you are in the spot and time that you're in right now. And that is what, what will prepare you, right, for the next steps and for the next levels. And then, then the other thing, this is funny, a conversation Ronnie and I had um, for the last few days, because for some reason we were reflecting back on that time when I went to the gym and pitched the original idea for the website, which was called My Voice DC back then. Mm -hmm. um, so when I, when I went pitched that idea, what's crazy is that I actually had to uh, do research, formulate mm -hmm. some ideas, right? Get some things together and pitch it. And right now I'm talking about like, 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 like where is that? And we feel like that's a lost art now. Mm -hmm. So even with people that say, hey, I want to talk to you about my business, right? Have they done research? Right. Uh, uh, have they thought about some things? Have, have they gone into it? Is it just like a top of the mind idea and they come to you because they figure you can give them a fast track? get right. to where they need to go. Uh, so, you know, again, for people that are listening, right, whether you're employed and you want to pitch ideas to the boss or to the team or to management, whatever it is, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're a beginning entrepreneur and you want to find more seasoned entrepreneurs and, and find out what they know and how you can elevate to the next level, do your research. Do your research, right? Come with an actual case of, of why somebody should get on board with what you're thinking and what you're doing and why you helping you can help them in the long run. Yeah. And I, I tell, you know, I tell my clients this all the time because most, 
other people that I work with, they, you know, they are passionate and talented and, you know, they love what they do and they know how to do it well, but they don't have the business acumen, right? And that's why they come. And, and once they get that, they can really shine and thrive. But most of them, to your point, aren't doing any, any research at all. I'm like, you cannot pick up the phone and want to have a conversation with someone that you know uses your service without proving the case as to why they should consider your service. What makes you different than everyone else? And what you have identified just by looking at their website that creates a gap that they need you to help them to fill. And so te even teaching people how to, in this case, prospect, this is what I'm talking about, not necessarily mark, initial market research to even identify who your ideal client is, but literally prospecting a person that you've already ascertained is your ideal client, but showing them why they should even consider having a conversation with you. And you're right, like people don't understand how to do that. And that's why they just sit on social media all day. And, and then like, I'm like, okay, well, what did you do to market? Oh, I, I posted it on Facebook. <laughs> well, what else did you do? Well, no, that was it. And like, 300 people liked it. I'm like, okay, well, what did you do after they liked it? Oh, well, I mean, I just thought that they would go and they would click the link. Yeah, no, it doesn't work like that. And, you know, I spend a lot of time, if I'm on Facebook, in inbox, after I've gone and I've looked at their website and their business, and I'm like, hey, I checked out your website. You might not even be aware of this, but I identify one thing that if you fixed it right now, it would make a massive difference for you. Would you be open to having a conversation and I'd share it with you? And, and my clients are like, how do you do that? I do research. Okay, like research <laughs> I do yeah. I just, it, it is, and it's anything. It's you know, if we want to take it back to the Bible, which of course is is very prominent in our community. You got to study to show yourself approved, mm -hmm. right? You've got to make sure that you're willing to do your due diligence. Or, in my opinion, you don't have a right to open your mouth. For me, that's what excellence is, and that's why I'm so thorough in 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 the things that I know that I know that I know. I'm thorough in them because I study to show myself approved and I'm never going to present, like, I don't do theory at all, right? Like one of the reasons I don't teach Facebook ads as an example is because I don't do them. Like we haven't done them. I know. Don't, I know I need to do, <laughs> don't, don't, don't get me right now, but we haven't, we have not been doing Facebook ads. I don't teach them because I don't know enough about it. When I finally get the energy to put in that direction, then maybe it will be something that I can talk to people about. But I have to study this. what I know. Like I'm, I'm a speaker and I know how to move that crowd to generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in a very short period of time. That's what I know. That's what I've studied. That's what I've perfected. And similarly, um, I think if, if people would just take the time to first study themselves, to show, show themselves approved in their craft, whatever the problem is they want to solve in the marketplace, that's number one. And then study to show themselves approved for whatever audience they want in the marketplace. And I think that's the thing I love the most about Black and Married with Kids before we, we shift to traffic, sales, and profit today is that you guys hit everything. Thanks. There was even something there for me as a woman who was Black but wasn't married and didn't have kids when I would go to your website and see what content was being produced and really just De determining the verticals within the market segment that you guys wanted to appeal to and exploiting that thing to the nth degree to be able to produce content that would get people to take action. And I think that there's just not enough of that today, which I think is maybe a good point for us to segue into how we got to traffic, sales, and profit, right? Because I, I imagine that part of the story is, I you said it earlier, we had to figure out how to market it, right? And so marketing is only effective if you've got traffic coming right and you need traffic in order to get sales and then ultimately if you're selling the right things at the right price points you get to experience profit at the next level so maybe talk a little bit about that that transition piece and what you guys learned about marketing and then how this turned into a whole nother business line for you to be able to capitalize and teach other um, businesses in the african-american community how to cap how to really take this and to the next level Sure. Well, what we found, like I said, we started the site in December 2007. The site took off, um, uh, I think, this, uh, maybe mid to late 2008. We finally started making money. And I think back then, a lot of ways that bloggers made money is that people run advertisements. So they do kind of, you know, influencer campaigns, things. But even the influencer campaigns are just getting started. So right. you might do something every now and then. But as the years ramped up, we started getting more to influencer campaigns. What that means for anybody listening is that uh, people come to us, they wanted to reach African-American 
families or more specifically African-American moms, they will come through us, we'd be the conduit because we effectively have grown into the largest um, African-American marriage and parenting site on the web, period. Right. So if we wanted to reach audience, they came through us. Uh, we grew it to over half a million people on a Facebook page, um, another maybe 30,000 on Twitter, you know, more on Instagram, people all around. Um, but what we found is that even though we were running advertising on the site, and that's the main revenue driver, to make more money, we had to make more content that pleased the advertisers. Right. The more we turned towards the advertisers, the more we turned away from our actual core audience, the couples and the singles and the people that came for the information that we wanted to serve. Because we were making the kind of content that got the ads. Right. Or got people interested in what we wanted to do. So it was a good buddy of mine who, who had a talk, and long story short, he helped me come to the realization that we needed product. We needed something of our own that was tangible that we could sell. So if somebody came to our site and they loved what we did, they could actually buy something, physical or digital, from us and take it away and not just read an article and go about their business. Mm -hmm. So we started with um, doing documentary film, which is a crazy product to start with. We started doing documentary films, had no previous experience, right? We had, had um, uh, even though I worked at the TV station, I was the IT guy. So, you know, I ran the IT department. All my stuff was computer-based. But I had a guy that that... Uh, I met that did a documentary and he sold me his old camera because he was upgrading. And, you know, Ryan and I were talking about doing a documentary. You know, I, I remember this conversation vividly. We were talking about hiring somebody, but how are we going to do that, right? Because we didn't know if anybody would ever watch the thing or buy it. We talked about bringing somebody in, but, you know, it always get funny when the money come into it. Mm -hmm. So we had no experience in this. And, and Ronnie said, well, you know, why don't you do it? And she said, you know, we got the camera. We, we bought the camera to do some web stuff on the actual website, do some uh, video stuff on the website. So we bought the camera, you know, I, I trust, I think you can do it. So for two weeks, I went out, interviewed couples. Uh, we did a film called Happily Ever After, a positive image of black marriage. Mm -hmm. Our first screening was a 160 seat theater in um, upper Northwest Washington, DC. Totally surprised us, we sold it out. Mm, awesome. And from that, we went to that first movie um, to actually um, ended up with seven full length documentary films. Um, the films grew to a size that we no longer could actually do screenings in DC. They didn't have theaters big enough, so we moved out to Prince George's County uh, into a playhouse. We'd do 500 seats, and then we'd add additional shows later on that afternoon. They set up folding chairs in the aisles. I always say it was like church on Easter Sunday. <laughs> and, and then we would do our own like seven, eight, nine, ten city tours around the country, looking at our major market, looking at the analytics of the website to say, all right, we got audience here, here, here. Those are the places we're going to. Uh, we would partner with um, nonprofit organizations, um, therapists, counselors, coaches, marriage ministries, and they would do screenings. You know, one year, 2010, we dropped the movie You Saved Me. We had 30 screenings across the country all at one time on one day. Mm -hmm. Everything from a mosque up in Harlem, New York, to an AMC in Rancho Cucamonga, California, to a, a mega church in Wichita, Kansas, which at the time I didn't even know black folks had mega churches in Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> but we grew it. So we went from documentaries to ebooks, audio books, membership sites, um, conferences, workshops, and cruises. We just actually came off our fourth and final BMWK cruise. Uh -huh. And over the years, we found out and we learned how to market. We learned what worked and what didn't work. Mm -hmm. We learned how to segment audiences. We learned how to look at the data and find out what people are coming to us for, which is one of the biggest things that when we really looked at the data, we found is that one of our biggest segments of people were singles. Mm -hmm. They weren't married. They didn't have kids, but wanted to know and learn and prepare themselves for That's marriage. Um, so we looked at the data, right? We created and redid the site based off of that. We segmented, um, you know, this is when we were getting into Infusionsoft and CRM and customer data. And what happened is people kept coming and saying, Lamar, um, can you teach me what you know? Lamar, can I pay you to train me? Lamar, can I pay you to coach me? And the answer is always no, because black and married kids are just growing so big and so fast. And we were in, still in the process of putting systems around the building team around it of getting things in place. And, and, and this is probably a great nugget for somebody listening. Um, the entrepreneurship thing was even sometimes more passionate about than the marriage thing. I, I always loved entrepreneurship and businesses and seeing other businesses. So I wanted to do it, but I had to wait. Right. I don't think most people like really exercise patience in the way they should. Mm. And, and I had to end up waiting probably was about two or three years from the time like people were coming to me and saying, hey, I will pay you for this. I literally have money in hand. I want to pay you for this to the time we opened up our very first program with an opportunity for people to do it. Because if I took my eyes off the ball of black and married with kids, before it was time to, both businesses, both brands would have crashed. Yeah. 
And I think a lot of times entrepreneurs, we get so excited about stuff, right? As soon as a new opportunity comes, a new opportunity or new revenue stream and new money, we feel like we have to jump on it. Like, I'm, I'm going to miss something if I don't take this. But what they miss is the opportunity to fully grow out and flesh out that original thing that they had. So yeah. people came. It took about three years um, to kind of get started. We got started uh, in 2015 with it. In 2015, I did four little small hotel workshops. Mm-hmm. And, and the first one, you know, for a while I was talking about the first TSP Live, but I forgot I actually did these events the year before. And the very first one, we had a marriage event in, uh, outside of Greensboro, North Carolina. So I said, hey, I'm going to do this, you know, traffic sales and profit event. I've been talking about, thinking about for years there. I'm going to do it. People are going to come. It's going to be easy. Uh, we did it and like six people was in a row. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is not what I'm used to. Because I'm used to Black and Mary. I mean, we, we 500 strong in the right. thing. What is this? Like, what is this six people life about, right? <laughs> uh, I need to reassess some things. But, but, you know, we did it. I made an offer for an actual online program I was creating. Traffic Sales and Profit online training system that was not released yet. Because mm-hmm. um, even I procrastinate. Everybody got their stuff, right? We, we want to talk about mindset, I'm sure. Everybody got their stuff. You just got to know how to move through your stuff. Right. That's right. How to keep moving forward. So I said, if I go out and sell it, I'll have to make it. That's I- <laughs> let's, start, let's just stop right there, Lamar. Because honestly, I believe that's what every entrepreneur, entrepreneur should do. I think doing all of the work in advance and then going to sell it, you don't know that there's a market for it. And you right. could have spent 20 hours creating that thing and heard crickets when you finally launched it. But if you get the outline done, you get the key messages together and the key benefits of what's going to come out of it and people grab onto it and then you have a commitment date when you have to deliver it. Listen, I remember I got a book for a keynote. This was 2015. And it was in North Dakota. I didn't know that, you know, I was like, oh, black people. I mean, I, I wasn't going to speak at a black event, but I was like, okay, let's see if there are black people in North Dakota. There were a few. And um, anyway, so I'm talking to the woman and she's like, oh yeah, we want this. You know, you're great. And I'm like, oh, well, I wanted, I had a book I wanted to finish. The book is called Burn the Box. Um, seven fire starter strategies that women can leverage to whatever they do. So anyway, and I'm pitching her this book that isn't even done yet, right? And I'm like, yeah, and I'm giving her the talk and this is what I'll keynote on and I've got this book. <laughs> the book was not done. And we were having the conversation in maybe May about me coming in September. And she's like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll get a sponsor. We'll get 300 copies of your book. W- when will the sponsor be ordering the books? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll order them August 15th so that we'll ha- that book was done August the 15th. But before then, it was a figment of my imagination of what I wanted to create because I just couldn't nail myself down to get it done. But entrepreneurs, write this down, people. We work well with deadlines. Yes. We work well. We will figure out what we need to do if there is a need for something that we have been thinking about doing it and people have put a dime on it. We will figure out how to get it done to deliver it in excellence when we promised it to you. That's true. Yeah, really well. That's so, yeah. true. So the, the four workshops, six people the first time, I think that's where I cut you off. Yeah, you did six. You know, and as, as you were talking, I, I was thinking, it's an, I think it's another nugget there for entrepreneurs too. Um, this is a, this was a, a course that I wanted to sell for like a thousand bucks or something like that. Um, but I got shook, right? You know, everybody, everybody gets shook when they, when they first start out in the beginning. So I was like, man, I don't know if they're going to buy it. I never, I never done anything in this space before. So what I did is, um, the first, I had the six people in the room, Right, and I made an offer at the end for like 500 bucks. And um, maybe I think it might have gotten like two purchases or something. But the two people bought it and it validated, like you're talking about, one, it validated that the idea, the concept, you know, was good because people were willing to exchange money for it. But the other thing it made me do is it made me feel sick because I knew it was worth more than that. Mm-hmm. I knew all the things I had learned, all the places we had been, all the press we had got, all the, you know, all the, the rooms we had been in packaged up in the system was worth way more than 500 bucks. Yeah. So at the next city, uh, we had a few more people, maybe it was like, like 12, 15 people. I sold it for $750. Boom, got, got, you know, got some sales on it. And then that still made me sick. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause I'm like, hold up, it's worth more than that. So, um, I think by the end, like by the fourth city, we set up like 1200 or something like that. Um, but what I learned through that process too, is that, um, you know, like, like sometimes you have to, well, not sometimes. All the time, you got to just start. Yeah. And it don't matter. Like, like a lot of people come to me and they're like, how much should I sell this for? Sell it for? Sell it? You know, so I'm just like, for real, most times they hate this answer, but I really don't care. Right. Because that's, a lot that's of, the same thing. <laughs> like, I don't care. Sell it for something. Like, 
right. Because I'm like, like your body will tell you if that's the right price or not, right? Because with me, I literally had a sick reaction to like, you know what? I know it's worth more than that. But the thing that's important is, for one, I just got it done. Because so many people are so paralyzed by all these questions they ask themselves. And I'm afraid that if I go out and, and I sell it and nobody buys, then what? Well, then what? You're going to try to sell it again to a different group. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm afraid that I go out and I don't sell it for enough. I could have made more. Yeah, you could have made more. So the next time you go out, you raise the price. But the thing that was important is I just went out and did it. Right. And, and I didn't get distracted by the fact there was only six people in the first spot. Uh, next year, we did our first conference, TSP Live. Like, I wanted 100 people in the room. And as I was telling the story over the last few months, what I realized, too, I was leaving out, we weren't 100 people. We thought we could get it because we started selling this course, and the course started doing well. And we actually were including a free ticket to the event mm. with the course. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like 100 random people. Like, a lot of these people already had the ticket. We still couldn't get 100 of them to come to Atlanta. So, uh, like I was saying, you know, we had about 67 tickets that we sold. But as I looked in the actual picture that we took that day, it was more like high 30s, low 40s. <laughs> right. But the thing is, again, we didn't stop, right? We had another event that January. We said, all right, we're doing this small event, 50 people. We're going to call the game plan, get them in the room. And guess what? It sold out, you know, almost been like the first month or so. Yeah. Then we said, all right, you know, we're doing TSP Live again next year. TSP Live, that was, you know, 40-something people that, that year before was 172. Mm-hmm. Then we said, all right, we're going to move the game plan and, and, and make it bigger. It was 50 people last year, make it 100. Boom, that sold out in advance. Then we said we need to make the two events kind of the same because they were kind of two totally different fields. Um, we're going to make them more similar to each other. Let's make both of them large. And we went from that to 250 people that June. The next January, we went to 300 people. And then this past June, we went from 300 to 600. Right. Which and is it's all a process. But, but what I tell people is that if we would have quit when there was six people in Greensboro, North Carolina, we never could have got to the 600. Right. So yeah. you gotta push. You gotta put. I mean, it's seriously a similar story. Like, and you know, I remember when I did my first, what was then Unleash Your Incredible Factor Live. I've rebranded my event now, but the first one I think we had maybe thirty-eight people. Then the next year we had seventy-eight. Then the next year we had two hundred and sixty-five. And then we had three hundred and twenty. And like it just kept growing. And you, you perform. You because because excellence is a, a core value. Even with six people in the room, you do it in excellence, right? Yes. And even with the the what you sold the um, online course and and recognizing the price point of it, I kind of want to go back to that a little bit because I think not only do people get caught up in pricing, but they don't make sure it feels good. Like I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm a business person through and through. I got an MBA. I know all. I know all of that stuff. All of the numbers. I know what you know. What your market will bear and all of that. And I say, fully on what your market will bear. I mean. <laughs> Yes, be, be cognizant of it, but you have to think about the transferable result. When they take this online course that they have access to for probably into perpetuity, and they just dial in and do the stuff in the course, they are going to make millions of dollars. Do you really only want to have made $500 <laughs> for them making millions, right? That's why we create these high ticket programs, people. It's not because we... We, we're, we feel like we're so grand and wonderful and we just pull a number out of the air. We're literally thinking about what is possible for you if you follow the steps and what will make us feel good to over deliver to you as you are going through it. So, cause I, cause I have to tell this quick story and you guys have heard it before cause I've talked about Chris. So Lamar, you haven't heard this story. So 2008, first client that I took to six figures. I was not making six figures at the time, by the way. Hmm. I sold her a $297 90-minute strategy session with myself, as bad as I am. And I was bad back then. Probably didn't know it as much because I only charged her $297. And from that, she went out and in something crazy, like 10 or 11 days, she generated $11,000. Wow. And then in 30 days from there, she generated $45,000. By the end of 90 days, she had generated $120,000 on a 297. I could not be happy for her. I was pissed. I was hot. I was feeling some kind of way, Lamar, because I'm like, wait a minute. You don't took this little $300 off $120,000. And I think I was still struggling. That was like a year later, I filed bankruptcy. And I was like, that was the last time I was like, that's the last time I'm going to ever feel that way. Like, I have to know that I know that what it is that I do, what I bring to the table, like you just said a minute ago, 
all of the years of experience, all of the research that you did, all of the case studies that you created, everything that you tested that is no longer theory has got to all be rolled up into whatever the investment is going to be for this program because they are not just paying for this little online course. They are not just paying for an hour of my time every week for six weeks or whatever. They are paying for the body of work that I've created that I know will generate this as they keep following the steps. And I wanted to say that um, not only because you felt the same way. And I think sometimes people look at, you know, people like you or I who have million dollar companies and they're like, yeah, but you know, they, they woke up like that. They never had to feel like I feel today. They don't get it. They don't understand. And the fact is we all started there but we all made it a, de a decision in excellence to keep pushing, keep doing the work, keep perfecting our craft and to get really, really clear about what's going to make us feel good. Because a big part in my, from my vantage point of generating or creating generational wealth is you got to charge way more than it costs. If you're, if you're only charging what all the numbers add up to, yeah, there is no getting ahead there. There is no profit. <laughs> There's just enough to get by, right? We've got to we've got to think different. We've got to shift our mindsets. We've got to get out of the, in many cases, the slave mentality that many of us are still wearing like a badge of honor that we really need to figure out how to let go because it's costing us our wealth building within our community. Yeah, um, it, it is. It is. And this, this is a great conversation. If we could, if I could add something to it, because um, it's it's a um, it's a it's a double edged sword in a lot of ways. I think too because one of the one of the things I remember uh, somebody on our team or, or you know somebody's new on our team one time was asking us because we do some like done for you we do a limited amount of done for you work for some of our clients mm -hmm. so they were saying well, well Lamar you know how come we charge like thousand 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 dollars for this thing and then it's like somebody else that may charge like five hundred bucks for it and one of the things I was telling them, like as you're saying is that because when somebody buys us what they're buying is um, the experience in the past they're buying like the seven figures worth of money we spent on Facebook ads over the years they're buying all the things we did that worked and all the things we did that didn't work right. that can stop them from failing immediately. Not to say that anything they do will be an instant success, right. but we already know all these other things don't work because we already tried them in our own business. Right, exactly. <laughs> we tried them with clients, right? And we know that that's not the path to go. So, so for people listening, when you have that type of experience, you have that type of perspective, that's really what people are paying for. And that's why it's actually valued um, at a premium. Right. Now, on the other end of, of it, um, I think sometimes people take the uh, know your value, know your worth conversation when they are just starting off and use it to harm themselves. Mm, okay. they, they, I think it's people that are starting out that have, have no experience, have no track record, that um, want to act as if they do. Mm -hmm. And they act as if somebody should be paying me uh, uh, $10,000, you know, for me to coach them. But I've never coached anybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but they should. But what they miss is the opportunity, and they get in somewhere to build influence, to have a track record, to have a great case study, to have a great a great story. Um, so it's funny, and I don't know exactly exactly where that lies. But I know it's a it's a lot of things over the years that I've done. Um, um, there could have been a, a speaking opportunity where. I take a speaking opportunity that doesn't meet my rate, right? And I got some little tricks and stuff I still might do around it. Mm -hmm. uh, make it work out for me because it's going to have to work out for me one way or another. Absolutely. But it might, be, might not meet my rate, um, but out of the back end of that, I can make $40,000, $50,000 from it, from an opportunity. Right. Where people, they don't look at the bigger picture and the bigger scope and the, and the bigger influence. They can say, well, you know what? Uh, you know, they won't pay me, you know, $10,000, so I'm not, I'm not taking that. I know my worth. <laughs> I know my worth, the Right. <laughs> So it is, it's, 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 it is it's, a double edged sword. Yeah, because I say the same thing. Like, you know, if we look just at speaker fees, <clears throat> I guess I'm at the point where I can earn ten, maybe fifteen thousand dollars, right? I mean, I've won some national awards, I've got some best selling books, um, you know, the bomb.com. And oftentimes, if my idle client is in the room, I'm like, keep your fifteen thousand dollars. Right. I can make a hundred and eighty thousand dollars if you just allow me to, I don't even have to sell anything. But just right. allow me to set my talk up so I can position myself to get people waiting to talk to me when I'm done. And I know every single body in that line is the equivalent to, you know, $18,000 if that's what my offer is. And I know I could close 10 people 
and make $180,000. I, someone posted this on Facebook and I always, I seldom interact with the, um, speak for free or not and why or why not. Right. But whenever I see it, it kind of burns me up because you have those people who are like, Oh no, I've worked too hard and you got <laughs> this amount of money and you want me to come. And I'm like, you fool. <laughs> Right. You're about to get this little five thousand dollars when you could have made like you don't you're not understanding the bigger picture. And I think all of that goes back to the first thing we started with today, which is excellence. Yes. Right. Because see, if you if you operate on a platform of excellence and you have a vantage point and a vision point of excellence, then you're never gonna get sidetracked by what's right in front of you because excellence is always way down the street every single time and it's constantly circling the opportunity to make sure you have a 360 view of whatever it is that you're being offered an opportunity to pursue and if we could just get people to do that and to not um think hustle and grind which drives me crazy um but instead like like you alluded to and i talk about all the time create the systems and the strategies that validate that there is no need to hustle right or if there is hustling, the only hustling you're doing is to go count your money. Like, you know, <laughs> that's all it is that's happening because you've set these systems up. Um, this is so good. And we didn't even, we got to talk about, okay, so we at least need to have an initial conversation. I'm going to have to have you back so we can have a whole conversation about building generational wealth. Um, and what I would love to hear just really is your heart around why for you, not only building it for yourself so that you create a legacy for your children, but why you want to teach other people how to do it. Yeah, because what I've found, you know, like I said, over the last, um, this is what, 2007, the last almost 12 years now, our work has been directed in our community, in the African-American community. And, and you know, for historical reasons, um, you know, we, we have not been, we got into the game late, right, for historical reasons. Um, but now that we're here, we need to make all progress, any efforts we can to move towards closing the wealth gap. Yeah. And, you know, what I say, and some people may not agree, and sometimes people do, I don't know, right, is that um, the way we get on equal footing is with money. Mm -hmm. The way we get a seat at the table is with money. Yeah. Um, and, you know, without money, without economics, without um, being able to generate wealth and establish wealth in our communities, we'll still be marched another 100 years from now. Yeah. We'll still be protests another hundred years from now. But I guess what, you know, I mean, excuse me, you know what? Money talks. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 I want the community as a whole to move from a place where we have lack and just enough. You know, I mean, it's, it's too many times when somebody yeah. uh, and their family dies and not only do they die and not leave anything, they die and leave debt. Right. You know what I mean? So so how can we begin to shift that narrative? How can we begin to change things? How can we begin to circulate dollars inside of our community? How can we begin to lift and hold each other up? You know, I mean, there are strategic things and ways we can do that. And that's really what we've dedicated um, a big portion of what we do now with Traffic Sales and Profit about. Is like I said, we want to build a class of entrepreneurs inside of our community that operate in excellence. You know, we, we have a, a manifesto on our manifesto. One of the key points is that, hey, don't do business with me because I'm black. Do business with me because I'm excellent. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's actually on our manifesto. Like, that's yeah. the stand that we want to set. When people came to our TSP event with 600 plus people in June, the number one thing I kept hearing is that this is black excellence. Yeah. This is what excellence looks like. And that, and that to me, was wonderful because that's what I want to do is I want to raise the bar. Right. Put people around me and change the vision of what they see and what they even think is possible so that other people can push beyond them. And one of the things I'm most proud of, we had somebody that came into our uh, free Facebook group. We got a Facebook group, Traffic, Sales, and Profit with Lamar Tyler. And we had somebody come into the Facebook group a few months ago, and they say, hey, I'm always hearing about, um, you know, people making six and seven figures, but I don't know anybody like that. Do y'all actually know anybody that's doing six, you need to say seven, like doing six figures, making right. six figures, right, in their life or in their job or business or even in their job. And, and but I didn't even have to jump in. Because them no, comments I, were, I commented on that post. <laughs> <Did you>? <laughs> 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 I mean, them comments were like, brrr, it was like that thing. Of comments, yeah. And, and what I love so much about it, and they were like, that's all this group is. Mm -hmm. it, it's people that are, and not to say it's, and everybody is making that kind of money, right. but they see it in front of them every day. It's not an anomaly. It's not something that's different. And they say, you want to see the real life manifestation of that, just go to one of the conferences. There's people on the stage that were sitting there that weren't, now they're doing six figures, now they're doing seven figures, now they're pushing towards eight. And, and one of our goals, our three-year plans, 
is, is specifically just inside of our um, program, our mastermind program, not even just in the whole community, just inside of our mastermind program alone. Um, by the time we get to 2021, we want uh, 25 seven-figure businesses. We want five eight-figure businesses. That's awesome. And we are like, like actually on the path, like a little bit ahead of schedule to get there. Mm-hmm. But like, cause that's something like we have specific goals that we want to change the game. When I look at that, it's a young lady we work with. Um, and it, this is what gets me excited. You probably can tell by the way I'm talking. Mm-hmm. This is excited. The young lady we're working with. We first started working with her in 2017, June 2017. We started, she had maybe like one or two people kind of working and helping part time. Now she has a, a team of about 11 people. Wow. And her husband works in the business now. Right? And they have two small kids. And one of the things I was, I was, telling both of them is Ryan and I were talking to them as husband and wife is that your children will never know anything other than this right other than entrepreneurship other than mommy and daddy working together right. other than success and now you're not only impacting your life but those 10 people that work for you think about the way you impact their lives as well mm-hmm. and that's what I think about when I come into the office every day and I see my team and and I'm supporting them encouraging them, loving up on them is that now we're not even just impacting us we're impacting other people we did TSP live you know, something that, that flipped the switch and me to the next level was the fact I always think about my team and, you know, the immediate impact we have. But that night with our AV company, um, they had about 15 people there. Mm-hmm. And I said, wow, we're not just impacting our employees, but now as we begin to, to, to specifically pick vendors we want to work with, we're impacting somebody else that gave 15 other people jobs. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love everything that you're doing. I cannot wait to get to a TSP. I'm like mad. I'm not, I can't get to the game plan because I have my own client event during that same time frame. but I'm definitely looking to be there because I, I have heard about the excellence and, you know, and I'm, I'm looking forward to getting some of that for myself to sit, to come and be a student. Like, awesome. I love it. <laughs> I need to learn this, this Facebook ad stuff. Well, I need to, you know what? I need to know enough about it to be able to hire the right people yes. to do it for me. Like, I'm not interested in being the one back there playing with the I'm not interested in that at all. Yes. But I want to make sure I know enough because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to waste money. Like, you know what I mean? I want to make sure because I, I don't have a problem investing, but I want to make sure that we're not just pouring into a hole because I could give it to a foreign country and get something out of it versus doing that. Um, but I know that, you know, that's definitely the way that we got to go. And everyone always says to me, if you're doing seven figures without Facebook ads, it's an opportunity, <laughs> it's happen it's an opportunity. when you start doing them, right? And I'm like, yeah, exactly. So we're coming. We are definitely coming. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So before we end, I always like to ask three questions. These are our incredible factor wisdom questions. Um, and then I want to give you an opportunity to just tell them how they can connect with you so they can learn about game plan in January, how they can learn about TSP Live. Is it going to be in June again next year? Yep, yep, always. Uh, January and June are always our two events. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So first question is, what is your favorite quote? Uh, my favorite quote is from um, Jim Rohn. It's, uh, it's not what you're worth, it's what you negotiate. Ooh. Okay, that's good. And then what was the last book you read? Um, last book I read was called Tax Free Wealth by um, Tom Wilwright. I finished that up um, uh, last week. Now I'm reading one about the educational system. Um, okay. I don't remember the name of it offhand. But Tax Free Wealth, it, it was great because because as we talk about this wealth thing, right? And I, I want to come back on. Come on, I gotta. Yeah, we gotta come back. Yeah, we I gotta, definitely. I gotta see you some home baked cookies or something. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get back. I gotta, I gotta try to bribe you to get back on. No, it's that. Look, Marlena will be reaching out to <laughs> get your your person's name, but she'll be reaching right back out to her when we finish, so we can get awesome. you scheduled. But but as we talk about wealth, now I'm looking at all right, like we're making money, right? Um, and a lot of us and a lot of people in our, in, in our you know, TSP community, I'm sure the same thing too. Like a lot of people are moving to stages that no one in their family has ever moved into. Yeah. So how can we make sure we're being smart with that money? How can we make sure we're protecting that money and actually um, not, not giving it all back in taxes? Or right. Like tax- giving none of it back in taxes. Like I just did my mastermind, the Leverage and Scale Mastermind. You have to be at six figures to be in. And we just did an entire session on how to pay no taxes. <laughs> yep, exactly. How- how do you create that really that wealth shelter so that you're like Amazon? I'm like, if Amazon can do it and he's making eight million dollars, eight billion dollars a year, then I know we can do it. I've been and saying it, teaching exactly. people because they have no idea. And so I love that we're on the same accord there. And I'm I'm gonna add that book to my list um, and check it out. Yeah. Oh, and then last question is what is one tool that you swear by to grow your business? Uh, Facebook. 
<laughs> Facebook, right? Yeah. So, so to us, Facebook is a multi-million dollar uh, sales funnel, mm. Un unlimited leads and potential. Wow. So, uh, what I would tell everybody that's that's on, I'm on Facebook all day, right? But I'm on it for a specific purpose and a specific reason to connect with people. Mm -hmm. uh, say, well, Lamar, you know, how do you how do you grow uh, your your events so fast? I grow them so fast because we we provide amazing value for free in our Facebook group. Mm -hmm. Then people know that, hey, if I get this much value just inside the group, what it would be like at the event? Right. Then they come to the event and say, oh, my goodness, I got this much from the event. What would it be like to be in one of the actual programs like the Mastermind? Mm -hmm. So um, for us, like I say, it, it, really is, it really is Facebook. But at the same time, right, uh, a key here is that we realize Facebook won't be around forever. Right. So while we have the opportunity, we grow, we exploit the opportunity, do as much as we can, but we always are leveraging for the future, then when Facebook isn't dominant, when Facebook isn't number one, when Facebook gets shut down, we right. still operate, grow, and scale a business. Right, and making sure that it, the people that are in your group are also coming onto your list, so you can control being able to market to them outside of Facebook. Like I think a couple of uh, what was that? Um, maybe six or eight weeks ago, when Facebook and Instagram were acting wonky for the day. Yep. And you know, people were losing their minds. But I think it was a great wake up call to realize that as great as it is and a tool as it can be that we do need to make sure we put these other measures in place. And I'm getting there. I mean, I've got like 1,200 people in my group. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm in your group. I love, okay, let me just give you another little, <laughs> little purple hand clap because you do, you have such great engagement. I say the same thing to April. Um, I'm like, okay, y'all just say hi. And like 3,000 people are like, hey, I'm like, I, want that. I say hi. And I might get one person. <laughs> So I, I love I love what you're doing, and that's part of the reason why I got the book. Just because I haven't been historically an online business, you know, we've built our business offline and leveraging offline strategies, and so now coming into this world and, and being able to um, benefit from it, and I truly see you as a, a master and a maverick. I'm so honored and grateful for you being here and to know you. So tell everybody how how can they connect with you. Um, if they want to deepen this conversation and learn more about your work and your events and everything that you have coming down the pipe. Sure. The easiest way and the best way, like I said, we have a free Facebook group called Traffic, Sales, and Profit with Lamar Tyler. Um, join the group, right? It's totally free to get into it. I can guarantee that just inside that group, there's an atmosphere like what you've seen, is community like what you've seen. Yeah. And we'll help you, you know, kind of push through challenges, solve problems, and get to where you need to get to. Um, and you need to come out to our next event, The Game Plan, which is happening in January. We're going to cover, right, four Ps here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people, products, projects, and profit. So those four P's we focus on to make sure that this next year is going to be your best year. But how do you plan for that? You don't get to January and start planning for January. You need to get into it and get set in position now. Yes. You have the TSP game plan. You can find out information about that at www.tspgameplan.com. So tspgameplan.com. And I'll go and I'll get the link to your Facebook group and I'll put all of that in the show notes for everybody. Anything else you want to leave people with? And this our first of a series of interviews with Lamar Tyler. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, just because, you know, we do need to do a series. I was just thinking too, we should do one on events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I have my event. I'm actually doing it in Atlanta. Profit from live events. I'm doing it in Atlanta. This time in, when is it? In September, September 11th through the 13th. We, we both and, do successful events. That would yeah. be a, a great conversation. I think it'd be a lot of, a lot of insight and stuff people can learn. But, um, you know, I mean, if I want to leave people with something, it's just to get started. I think too yeah. many people get stuck. Too many people have, uh, what, paralysis by analysis, thinking about all the different ways you could do it, all the different tools you could use. Right. Um, should it be this price or that price, the low price or the high price? It don't matter. What I'm going to tell you to do is, is get started. That's the main thing. Right, done beats perfect every single time. You have to get started because no matter when you get started, you still have to I call it LAO, launch it, analyze it, and optimize it. So, whatever yeah. you've been sitting on, get it into the marketplace today so that you can validate that it's valid, that people actually want to buy it, and then get headed quickly towards that goal. Awesome. There you have it, Lamar Tyler. You guys go and check him out. We'll put everything in the show notes for you. Thank you so much, Lamar. I can't wait for our next conversation. Thank you. This was awesome. Awesome. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Didn't I tell you you were going to love hearing Lamar Tyler? Listen, I am so fired up. Oh my gosh. I can't even 
sit in my seat. That's how on edge I am about that amazing conversation that the two of us just had. If you enjoyed our conversation and you want to connect directly to Lamar, then you want to make sure you check out the show notes and get a link to his Facebook group and his upcoming event, TSP Game Plan. And a quick shout out to the Six Figure Cashflow Club. Join us on Facebook in my exclusive community for training, laser coaching, and strategies to help you leverage your incredible factor and unlock Six Figure Cashflow in your business by visiting SixFigureCashflowClub.com. Thank you for joining me for the Leverage Your Incredible Factor Business Podcast. I'd really love to help you grow a business that funds the life you crave while doing work that shakes the planet. Get started today by applying for a discovery session with me or a member of my team at darnielle.com forward slash session. And if you enjoyed our time together, do yourself a favor, head on over to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Until next time, remember, you do deserve a business that funds the life you crave. Take care.